With regards to Palestine, what is amazing and shocking about Palestine is not the genocide which is being committed by Israel. Apartheid regimes all throughout history have been genocidal. Apartheid regimes have always committed atrocities and so on. So that is not new. What is shocking and surprising is the fact that the government of Kwame Nkrumah's Republic of Ghana still declares publicly that it stands with Israel. I mean, it's so shocking, it's unbelievable that the government which is supposed to be speaking for me, for all of us, is still happily declaring that it stands with Israel. What a government. And you can't understand it. Because even the United States of America, which is the main supplier of weapons, which has given Israel a lot of diplomatic assistance, has vetoed resolutions in the UN Security Council and so on, Britain, Germany, Canada, all of them are retreating from that position. Today, you cannot get even Joe Biden to say that he stands firmly with, with Israel. And yet the government of Ghana continues to insist that it stands firmly with Israel. On what basis? First, under international law, and, and this is clear, occupying powers, occupying countries, occupying forces have no right of self-defense. And I dare anybody to tell you, under international law, if you're an occupier, you have no right of self-defense. It is the occupied who has a right to resist. The right to resist, including armed resistance. So this whole thing about, you know, as if Israel and Palestine can be placed at the same level. It's not true. Israel is an occupying force. The Palestinians are victims uh, of occupation. They are victims of genocide. They are victims of apartheid and so on. And international law fully recognizes the right of Palestinians to resist. You understand? Now, look at what is happening in Palestine, especially in Gaza. It is clear from statements made by Prime Minister Netanyahu, his defense minister and others, that the objective is not just to get rid of Hamas. The objective is to steal more Palestinian lands and push the Palestinian people into the desert. That's a crime under international law. Netanyahu is now talking about from the river to the sea. What does that mean? That Israel's domain will be from the river to the sea. That's a complete wipeout of Palestine. And you see, history is there uh, to guide us. The whole land was Palestine. Until the Balfour Declaration eventually got to the United Nations and so on. And it was agreed that part of Palestine be used for the establishment of the state of Israel. Okay? Now, if you look at the map of Palestine, Israel has occupied virtually two-thirds of the land. And the indigenous people of Palestine have been pushed into Bantustines. Can you imagine that for Palestinians to travel from one Palestinian town to the other, they need a visa from Israel? How is that possible? Gaza is completely delinked from the West Bank. Israeli settlements have been built in between. If you go to Israel today, uh, and to some extent Palestine today, there are different roads for Israelis and different roads for Palestinians. How can we tolerate this? And we have tolerated this. We've tolerated the belligerence of Netanyahu. We've tolerated actually the madness of the Israeli establishment for too long. Everybody is talking about a ceasefire. Israel says no, we would not have a ceasefire. But you see, in all of this, the weakness of the Israeli apparatus and its military machine has been exposed. 
You remember the Six Day War? That is the June 1967 war, where Israel fought against virtually all of the Arab nations. It took six days for Israel to capture the Golan Heights, for Israel to, to virtually dominate the space. After four months, Israel cannot claim that it has achieved even one of the objectives it set itself. This total humiliation for Israel. October 7th has demonstrated that Israel is not that huge monster that people believe it is. Yesterday I was looking at a video of the October 7th attack and I saw Israeli soldiers, Charlie, running, running from, 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 from the, you know, al Qassam Brigade. They are not invincible. If they persist in carrying out this genocide, there will be consequences not just for Israel, but for the world, if they persist. You know, the thing that shocks me, and, 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 and I must say, I mean, the hypocrisy of the West. Now, today, when I'm talking about the hypocrisy of the West, I'm even ashamed. Because the hypocrisy of the West is even better than the stand that the Ghana government has taken. At least, they are mouthing condemnations of Israel, OK? Our government is not mouthing condemnations of Israel at all. But the hypocrisy of the West is amazing. Joe Biden and America say that they don't want the war to continue. They want a ceasefire. That Israel should not launch an assault on Rafah and so on. And yet, they keep supplying weapons and cash to Israel. Why? Why? Who are they fooling? You know? But look, what is happening, if it's not brought to an immediate end, would have serious repercussions on every country in the world. In the late 1960s, everybody thought it was just a Middle East affair and so on. That has had consequences on the global economy, and the world has not recovered from what happened in the Middle East in the late 1960s and early 1970s. How much are we buying a, 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 what is it, a barrel of crude oil? The prices of oil escalated to levels unprecedented, unbelievable, because of the crisis there. Now, the Middle East, as a geographical location, is extremely important for world trade. The Middle East, uh, as a place which has huge deposits of oil, of gas, and so on, it's extremely crucial for the survival of the human race, energy, the energy question. You understand? Even this effort, you know, to bring about climate, to halt climate change and so on, you cannot do anything without reference to the Middle East. Now, if you want the Middle East to burn, let's continue being stupid. If you want the Middle East to burn, let's forget of all our humanitarian attributes and support the madness that is happening there. You know, when we talk about apartheid and genocide and so on, Israel has a long history. Israel supported apartheid South Africa in its war against black people. It supported racism in apartheid South Africa, the worst form of racism. It exchanged intelligence uh, with apartheid intelligence services. It provided weapons to the apartheid government. It is even believed that it's on the basis of intelligence provided by Israel that Nelson Mandela was arrested. You understand? And we still continue to tolerate this, this uncivilized behavior, this mad, genuine madness, genuine madness. It's unbelievable. It does appear that we are waiting for something extremely dramatic to happen before we begin to put on our thinking caps. And if that is our wish, may our wish be granted. If that is our wish, Israel has to be stopped by whatever means possible. You know that the, the, the ruling of the International Court of Justice is enforceable. It's enforceable through the Security Council. And if the Security Council, if the Security Council the ruling is vetoed, this enforcement is vetoed, South Africa can then go to the General Assembly 
and get a resolution, which is a binding resolution. You understand? It has happened before in history and so on. So I would urge South Africa to go the full hawk, you know, and ensure that we stop this genocide. And my other colleagues have, have said it. South Africa is playing a very crucial role in world affairs today. Of course, the internal difficulties with South Africa, the management of the national economy is not the best and so on. But in terms of international politics, the fight, the global fight against apartheid and racism, South Africa is showing the way. South Africa continues to be a staunch supporter of the Saudi Arab Democratic Republic. It's a struggle against Moroccan occupation. South Africa continues to support the resistance of, of the Palestinians against apartheid. South Africa all over the world has taken a clear stand in favor of the forces that are fighting against repression and domination. And for that purpose, South Africa needs tons of commendation, especially its foreign minister who is leading this charge. An amazing woman. You understand? I met her a couple of months ago in Joburg. And I, 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 I was shocked at her depth of understanding of international politics, her vision of, of, of a new Africa, you know, which is almost the same as the vision of Nkrumah. Our presidential candidates are supposed to be delivering visions here. What are they telling us? Wish list. That's what they are throwing at us. They should speak to the South African foreign minister and they will realize the difference between a vision and a wish list. She's an amazing woman. And I salute the South African government. I salute the Palestinian resistance. And I salute all the forces around the world who are engaged in this massive resistance for sanity and decency in international affairs.